Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Today we're doing an official CompTIA practice quiz. You can find this on the CompTIA website. I'm gonna go through these questions. I'm gonna tell you my thought process, explain how I'm picking each answer, and we'll see how I do at the end. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so a business development team reports that files are missing from the database system, and the server login screens are showing a lock symbol that requires users to contact an email address to access the system and data. Which of the following attacks is the company facing? Now I'd like to read the question twice, then read the answers and read the question again, especially if it's a longer question, just so I understand everything. So we, and I, I like to rephrase the question. I think that's very important. So we have a business development team reports that files are missing from the database system. Okay, so this isn't important. Who, who reports it is not important. From the database system and the server login screens are showing a lock symbol. So server login screen showing a lock symbol requires users to contact an email address to access the system and data. Okay, which of the following attacks is the company facing? Now that sounds to me, I like to have an idea in my mind before looking at the answers, a lot like a ransomware attack. Uh, so let's take a look, rootkit, ransomware, spyware, bloatware. Now, <clears throat> ransomware attacks will often show you a screen saying, contact us, pay us money, uh, the key word here is <clears throat> the lock symbol and requiring users to contact that email address to access the data. So I think that would be a ransomware. So that would be B. I'm going to write that down. And all I'm doing is I'm just keeping this on a note card. <laughs> all right. Uh, during a security incident, the security operations teams identify sustained network traffic from a malicious IP address. 10149. A security analyst is creating an inbound firewall rule to block the IP address from accessing the organization's network. Which of the following fulfills this request? <clears throat> okay, so we need to make a firewall rule to block traffic from 10149. Access list inbound deny IP a source 0000 destination. Okay, so we want the the destination would be our servers. So we need the source to be this. So we can automatically uh, disqualify anything with the destination of this. Or the, So we need to have the destination, the source be the one. So the, these two, it's between these two here. Okay. Okay, so this is pretty simple, I think. Access list inbound deny IP source 10.1.4.9.32. Destination zero, 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 zero. Okay, so I think it's gonna be Bravo here. Just to double check, we're denying traffic from this to destination any, which is that zero address, so that's gonna be Bravo. And you, you wanna make sure you, on these easier ones, you wanna make sure you read it carefully because there could be one little word that trips you up. Sometimes there's a double negative, so we want to make sure what they're asking, which of the following fulfills this request. So we know that this is correct, I, I think. Um, and that's very important. A lot of times you'll see an easy question. You'll say, oh, it has to be that. If you miss one word, like not or doesn't, then it can change the whole context of questions. You have to read the questions very carefully, particularly on these CompTIA exams. Which of the following threat actors is the most likely to use a common hacking tools found on the internet to attempt to remotely compromise an organization's web server? Which of the following threat actors is most likely to use common hacking tools found on the internet? Okay, so this is a threat actor that is using publicly available tools, so they're not very sophisticated. So level sophistication is low. That's what we're trying to figure out. Organized crime, insider threat, unskilled attacker, nation state. Okay, so of these, the level of sophistication is very high for organized crime and for nation state, which are often kind of depending on the, na the nation, could be the same thing. Not an insider threat because we're going to be accessing the, the web server is going to be publicly facing, so it's going to be, I'd say, unskilled attacker. Unskilled attacker C. I think that's pretty solid. A systems administrator would like to set up a system that will make it difficult or impossible to deny that someone has performed an action. Which of the following is the administrator trying to accomplish? 
A sysadmin would like to set up a system that would make it difficult or impossible to deny that someone has reformed an action. I think this is asking us about a certain term. Non-repudiation, adaptive identity, security zones, deception, and disruption. This is an example of a definition type question. So we can tell that this is going to be non-repudiation A, because the definition of non-repudiation is uh, recording actions or auditing actions, making it so that users cannot deny that they have performed an action. That's non-repudiation. Five, which of the following types of controls decreases the likelihood of a cybersecurity breach occurring? Types of controls decreases the likelihood of cybersecurity breaches occurring. I would say a mitigating control, but we're probably going to be given options about detection, uh, corrective, compensating. So let's see what they have. Okay, corrective, transfer, detective, preventative. Which of the following controls decreases the likelihood of a cybersecurity breach occurring? So a corrective control is going to happen after the fact, so that's not going to help us stop a breach. A uh, transfer control is something, if we're, it's not really a type of control, but if we transfer risk, we're buying insurance, for example. Detective controls can help, but on their own, they don't help um, do that. They would help us determine if a breach was occurring. So a preventative control, I think, would be the best answer here. Okay. A company is expanding its threat surface program and allowing individuals to security test the company's internet facing application. The company will compensate researchers based on the vulnerabilities discovered. So it's a compensating control. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Which of the following best describes the program the company is setting up? Okay. Expanding its threat surface program, allowing individuals to security test the company's facing internet application compensate researchers based on vulnerabilities. This is a bug bounty. A company is implementing bug bounty. <laughs> All right, let's see what they say. Open source intelligence, bug bounty, red team penetration testing. Yeah, this is a definition of a bug bounty. Uh, so definitely a bug bounty here. This is going to be a bug bounty. That's the definitely the answer. And actually, Cybercraft, we have a bug bounty too. We have, a, I think it's a really healthy security practice. So I, I have paid out bug bounties myself to people who found vulnerabilities on Cybercraft site. So I think it's a really good way to um, improve your security of your systems. All right, which of the following is the final step of the incident response process? Okay, containment, lessons learned, eradication, detection. Well, lessons learned is where we capture all the lessons that we've uh, discovered or learned in the process. So it has to be lessons learned. That's a very simple one. Lessons learned would be the answer there. That's at the very end of the process. Which of following provides the details about the terms of a test with a third party penetration tester? So this could be some sort of contract. I believe it's called the terms of service. Which of following provides the details about the terms of a test with third party penetration tester, rules of engagement, supply chain analysis, right to audit clause, due diligence. Okay, rules of engagement is the correct term. Uh, that's just, you have to have a rules of engagement in place, and that's specifically for pen testing. It's, the ter it's called the rules of engagement, but that is a form of contract. It's not going to be a supply chain or due diligence or audit clause. All right. Oh, I guess the answer is at the bottom there. Uh, organization is leveraging a VPN between its headquarters and a branch location. Which of the following is the VPN protecting? Data in use, data in transit, geographic restrictions, data sovereignty. Organization is leveraging a VPN between its headquarters and branch locations. Which of the following is the VPN connecting or protecting? Okay, so this is going to be a site to site VPN. Probably an organization leveraging VPN. Which of the following is the VPN protecting? I got to read the answers to figure out this one. Data in use, data in transit, geographic restrictions, or data sovereignty. Okay. Sometimes the question doesn't make sense unless you read the answers, but usually you want to keep in mind an answer before you look at the answer. So you want to determine what you would answer before looking at the answers. So I think this has to be data in transit. I mean, data in use, 
is not going to be protected by a VPN. A VPN is designed to protect traffic sent over a communication channel, usually the internet. So I think it has to be data in transit. So B. Okay, and at the bottom, I think is the answer key. So let's not look at that. Which of the following would be the most helpful in restoring data in the event of a ransomware infection? Okay, so if a ransomware infection happens, usually we restore with backups, unless it's like a double extortion attack where there's ransomware and then the, the organization threatens to release that information also to the public. But I think backups would be traditionally the most common solution. Load balancing, geographic dispersion, encryption, backups. Yeah, backups would be the answer there. And that's just understanding ransomware attacks. All right, so here's the answers I have. Uh, so let's take a look at the, the answer key here and see what's going on. Okay, B, B, C, A, D, B, B, A, B, D. Okay, great. So I got all this correct. So great job, I think we did it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I think these are pretty good questions. These are very similar to questions you'll see on the test, I think. Uh, I think it's a really good representation of the types of questions you can ask us on the test. So if you want to practice with these same questions, well, there's no real point, I guess, to go into the website now if you watch the video. But I hope my thought process helped you kind of determine how to approach these questions, how to think about them, and the main things you have to pay attention to when you look at these questions, you got to read the question very carefully. Look at those key words that indicate the right answer. There's always going to be a key word or indicator that's going to tell you what answer is going to be correct. Try and think of an answer in your head before looking at the answers. And then make sure you read all the answers very carefully. Uh, don't jump on an answer. Go back and read the question. Make sure that that makes sense. But I, I hope this was a really helpful exercise. And I hope it helps you studying for your next CompTIA certification. If you're taking your Security Plus uh, please watch my other videos. I hope they help you as well. But have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care.